what is going on YouTube world here we go again the Rye report for the week of uh, 23rd I guess technically technically I did the Rye report on this week Sunday but we're gonna ignore that and pretend that was the Rye report of the last week because um, technically it was recorded the day before so hey, hey there you go it, it all works out in my brain don't worry about it here we are let's talk about the meta game new box ddd all that we'll talk about that towards the end if you want to hear my opinion on that of course ddd just came out so it's kind of hard to gauge um but we'll talk about that in due time let's first talk about the current meta game and how it's shaping up how it's looking up here uh of course tier one harpies i mean you, you can't <laughs> you really can't argue against them here they are rogue one uh more like tier one uh, the only thing you can really say about Harpy Ladies is there has been an increase in how many Harpy players are being played right now, probably because um, the play rate of Water and Melodious, the Tier 2 decks, have started to go down uh, because the overall win rate of tournaments for both Water and Melodious has gone down uh, over the last week or so. Uh, they're getting top 32 just fine. Um, but getting to top 8 plus to get on the power rankings to actually winning the tournaments has been really, really rough for these two decks specifically. Uh, they are just losing to all of the rogue decks that we have in the current metagame. Where something like Harpy Ladies doesn't really lose to rogue decks. Uh, they really only lose to the meta decks. So, you've been seeing an increase, even more of an increase to the tier 1 Harpy usage right now. Um... So much so that if we continue on that trajectory, we may even see the tier 2 decks potentially drop a tier and just everything's tier 3 except Harpy Ladies again, just to kind of show the vast strength the deck has over everything. But as of right now, Soul Tier 1 uh, is where we got that going. Next up, Melodious. Melodious has been struggling. <laughs> They've been, they do well against, um, you know, the, the, the meta decks, but... Uh, man, they are just losing to the most random, uh, decks when it comes to Rogue. In fact, we had a tournament yesterday where the top four was two Melodious. And it looked like Melodious was going to take the whole thing. But one Melodious lost to Noble Knight, and the other lost to Chronomalies. And it's like, how can this deck be a meta-defining deck if it's just losing to Rogue? And at the end of the day... It's, it's really just, it's got a few oppressive tools and a pretty bad deck overall. That's, that's really the best way to describe it. The deck itself ain't that great, but it has enough oppressive tools in such a weak metagame that it's able to define the meta purely based off of those really, really, really uh, oppressive tools. In Score, in Troberta Banish, in Bloom Diva, just requiring an out for the Bloom Diva, essentially. So... Uh, those tools are still so powerful that it's dictating what can and cannot be meta, and it's literally dictating the style of metagame with the whole bounces and everything that we have. Uh, that this, you know, I still consider it a tier 2, but if it does continue the downward spiral that it's going into right now, we may have to reconsider that option. Uh, but statistically, the second best deck has been the water deck for another week in a row. Probably going to be a third week in a row. Statistically, by power ranking speakings, Water X Seed has performed the best, second best deck uh, for an extremely long, long, long time now. Um, again, it's just one of those decks where if the metagame is really, really small, uh, they can side deck more appropriately. The, their, their greatest strength is their small core. Uh, and when you have such a small core, you have much, much more room to play really annoying floodgates. Uh, floodgates, things like being non-fusion area to stop fusion monsters, poisonous winds to stop Harpy ladies, uh, stuff like that is is what you're kind of seeing in water. And they're just the deck that can play the most of them in the side, in the main, wherever you need to do it. I mean, this deck mains at Necro Valley. No other deck does that, so <laughs> um, they're kind of chilling. They're probably going to remain tier two as long as the metagame is as small as it is. Um, that's just kind of where the baseline power. We're at right now tier three tier three you might as well call the destiny draw tier magnets and yosinju continue doing well in tournaments only really losing to uh things like harpy lady and stuff like that uh they they are fantastic stall decks that's really what it, uh, actually, not really stall decks control decks 
Uh, they're they're stall, but with a purpose, you know. They're they're the ones playing the the sphere Karibos, the Kyroids, getting their destiny draw. Magnets have their Gorgonic Guardian, which is really amazing for negating monster effects and popping them. On top of that, um, Berserkion is a fantastic force. Uh, you know, to use as well. Yo Senju, of course, with all the bounces, with the Kamas, comma, uh, comma one bounce, the Oyam stall, as well as the heavy, heavy uh, monster and hand trap var variants with backward removal instead of the heavy trap version that we used to see back in the day to play around Harpies as much as they can, continues doing very well uh, in our, our tournaments. So uh, it re you really could just recall tier three as the destiny draw tier. Uh, Destiny draws a very good skill, and it forces your opponent to play suboptimally uh, just so they don't trigger your D-Draw. You're either triggering D-Draw, giving your opponent advantage, or you're not triggering D-Draw, and your, your opponent is slowly gaining advantage, and your opponent has to dictate which one they can do based around your hand traps. So, there you go. Uh, good job for those decks. Rogues, the Rogue decks has changed up a little bit before. We, I just had Noble Knight and Red Dragon Resonate RDA in here. Uh, Red Dragon kind of had a, a weak week this week. Uh, they haven't really done much, so we're gonna. There's not much to say there. Uh, their skill was finally fixed to be corrected. The skill was bugged. Good job, Konami developers. <laughs> I, I don't know how they did that, but um, the skill's been officially fixed. So you know, it, it's been working as intended in the tournament scenes. We didn't make any mistakes or anything, and it looks like RDA is just gonna settle down as being a, a, a mid-tier rogue deck. Um, hasn't won any tournaments or anything like that, but hey, you know, here we are uh, with them. Uh, Luna Lights. So I was talking earlier about how the usage of Harpy is starting to go up because the other tier two decks just aren't winning as many tournaments as they were in the beginning, and people are switching back to Harpies. Um, Luna Lights. A lot of people were, were curious what happened to Luna Lights when the meta shifted. Uh, did did, did like because. The Luna Lights, if you guys remember, were doing very well against Automats, and a lot of people thought a Luna Light meta is coming. But here's the thing about Luna Lights, they're not a very proactive deck, right? Uh, think of the other Destiny Draw based decks. They have proactive plays that force your opponent to start making choices. Uh, Luna Lights don't really have that. Their Luna Light Fusion kind of depends on their opponent having a special deck monster. Their Destiny Draw depends on their opponent. They have both Limit 2s and Limit 3s, so they can play less hand traps. Um, a lot of their plays just kind of depend on their opponent doing something. Uh, and depends on the decks that their opponent plays as well, you know? Uh, if everyone just plays Harpy Ladies, then Luna Lights can come in and be able to counter Harpy Ladies pretty well. There's really only one realistic out that Harpies can have in the, in the main deck without going into the side. Um, but against, like, Bloom Diva and, and you know, even things like... Yo, know, Sinju's being able to Utopic Ray them and stuff, it's just its just kind of hard for for them to reliably be able uh, to be in a metagame. And the only reason they're kind of in Rogue now, kind of mid-Rogue, is, again, the increase of Harpies means you can start playing Lunalites more and, and expect to top more often. Um, but I think as long as things like Melodious exist and stuff like that, the, you know, they're, they're always going to kind of be in the Rogue tier. Uh, unless you have another overwhelming deck like Automats that are hard countered by Lunalites, uh, come back into the metagame, they probably won't come back because they really just, they, you know, they're definitely anti-meta, right? They're always been, they, they just depend on your opponent and less so your plays, right? It's 60% you and 40% your opponent playing when Luna Lights are on the board. But had a good week, I, I would say, and with the increase of Harpy usage, I, I'd stick him in a rogue, no problem. Gaia, oh my god, I took Gaia completely off last time and Again, probably because the Melodious usage is going down slowly. They have had a fantastic week, and uh, they've even won a tournament. That's 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 pretty crazy. Gaia, still a good rogue deck. Uh, probably the best rogue deck. May even break into tier 3 if it continues having an outstanding performance. Um, but as as people, you know, if 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 Gaia ends up in Rogue uh, tier three, it's because Melodious ended up dropping another tier because it's just not winning and people are abandoning it apparent uh, uh, apparently. So as of right now, safe to say it's Rogue. Maybe it's tier three. We'll have to wait another week or so to tell for sure. Uh, and then Noble Knight. Noble Knight is is just one of those decks where if you go first and you open up combo. 
any of your three combos. Well, if you open up two of the combos, it's it's like a normal deck. But if you open up the Merlin equip combo, this is actually like a tier one deck. It's probably better than all the decks here if it goes first and opens up full combo. Uh, the only problem is the chances of that happening. Well, first of all, it's 50-50 to go first, right? And then opening up not breaking in a 30 card combo is even less than 50-50. So it's like, what, 20%, 50% chance of it actually happening? Not very high. Um, so unfortunately, in a tournament setting, that's just not that's just not going to cut it, Chief. You know what I mean? Um, but it does have very, very winning matchups against, for example, Melodious. Uh, in fact, the tournament I was just talking about, the one where top four Melodious lost to Noble Knight, he faced top eight and top four Melodious back-to-back, -back, and it was just embarrassingly one-sided so noble knights has winning matchups in this meta which really you know does well for them and the harpy matchup was which is a you know a, a, a loose situation for them is not really anything new that they've had to deal with uh if if noble knights go second at all they're all right their chances of winning have already been dashed by more than half um so unless he opens the outs to the harpies and the back row which is just like every other matchup, <laughs> you know, like they're, what I'm trying to say is they're already used to playing under those conditions. Even the old overpowered Noble Knights would lose if they go second most of the time. It's just kind of how things were. Um, and back then you couldn't play Parallel Twister in Book of Moon because you play Balance. So that got ruined. Um, so Noble Knights, still a good rogue deck. Probably the second best rogue deck we have right now. Uh, but they will not be entering i don't think they have a chance of entering the metagame at all i think they'll always be rogue uh, just due to their own consistency problems i don't foresee this deck even even if it had winning matchups across the entire meta if you can just brick like that you auto lose it doesn't matter <laughs> for the most part um and that's gonna be it for the majority of the actual metagame right now let's talk ddd and i guess new box in general um as far as those decks go, we've only had two tournaments under the name, and across both tournaments, we had like 20 or so DDD players, and none of them topped any of the tournaments. So I think there's still potential in there to at least hit Rogue tier, but there's nothing in DDD that's like oppressive, right? Like the Bloom Diva, like if you knew nothing about Melodious and you saw Bloom Diva for the first time, you're like... Yeah, this will probably be in the metagame somehow, even if it's just Rogue, because of an oppressive play like that. Or Harpy Slash. First time you see Harpy Slash, you're like, yeah, I don't know if this will be like Tier 1, but that's a very oppressive play that they have there. Um, and DDD lacks that. They don't really have a play that feels unfair. Um, they're extremely fun, and I do think that there's so much there that a lot of people haven't considered yet, that there's got to be something to at least make them Rogue. Um, at least, you know, for the people that want to play them. Uh, I'm not super convinced of it being meta yet. Uh, I still got to see more. Uh, of course, it's only been two days, so I'm not, like, putting out my judgment on them yet. Um, but, you know, just, there's, there's no oppressive play. There's no turn one play. There's no heavy negate or bounce play. So that is my main concern because everything else in this metagame has an insane oppressive style play, right? Harpies have their bounce, Bloom Diva has score and, and Bloom Diva. Water Exceed has infantry pop, Magnets, Yosinjus have hand traps, Berserkion, bounces, um, Luna Lights have untargetable monsters, uh, you know, uh, Noble Knights have Merlin pl uh, Merlin plays with Dristan, all that, all that unfairness. Uh, Gaia has the pop, pop, pop with the field spell to turn off hand traps. RDA has, you know, a bunch of life points. Like, there's a bunch of oppression that these decks get. And the only thing I really saw with DDD was skipping the standby phase, which is a very interesting concept, especially when combo with, like, Stromberg and stuff. But is that really going to be the way to play? I don't know. Hopefully by the next Rye Report, I'll be able to give you a more definite answer and just be like, yes, DDD is or is not meta. Um, so make sure to watch for that. And as always, till next time, YouTube, I love you.